Good morning, BCC. Won't you stand and join us today? Come on, let's praise the Lord together. Excuse me for a minute, but I've got a song to sing. It might not be on key, but it's for my heart. And no one else can tell it, but what the Lord has done for me. This might take all day, so I better start right now. And it might get loud. It might get loud. Heaven's coming down, 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 and it might get loud. It might get loud. Heaven's coming loud, down, down, and it might get loud. I don't got a halo. No, I'm not a perfect man. I'm just kind to be a child of God. When I think about what could have been, should have been, would have been, if we had to step in. Oh, I got a praise on the inside of camp. Our giving highlight this month is George and Mirab. They're doing an incredible job of reaching the people of Beirut, Lebanon. And if you would like to be a part of giving back to helping them continue to reach more people, you can do one of two things. You can either go online to grainvalley.church or you can grab an envelope on a seat nearby you, mark your giving as other, and everything marked other this month will go directly back to George and Ann. 
Make sure to stick around after the service next week. We're gonna be having a picnic just to have some fun over Labor Day weekend. We're gonna have some hot dogs, some burgers, free food for everybody, bounce houses, some games that we can play together as a family. It's gonna be an awesome day. We hope that you can join us right after the service next Sunday. VCC is turning eight and we would love for you to come and join us on September 8th to help celebrate. It's gonna be an awesome day that we look back on all that God has done over the past eight years. We can't wait to celebrate and we hope that you'll join us that day. Join us for prayer night on September 9th. Normally this is the first Monday of the month, but with Labor Day weekend happening, we're pushing it back to the 9th. So mark that on your calendars. September 9th, seven o'clock at the crossing prayer night. Incredible night of prayer and worship. We hope that you can make it out and join us that night. And now Pastor Jason is gonna come and continue our series, Winning in Life. Well, who's glad to be at church today? Hey, so glad that you are here with us, excited about today. We are in a series called Winning at Life and uh, have something that I want to share with you today. So we're going to jump right in uh, to the message. If you missed last week, you can go uh, check it out online, of course. But uh, today we're going we're gonna to have part two of this series, Winning at Life. Next week, we're going to conclude the series. You're going to want to be here for that. Um, I know that many of you probably here in, in the audience, um, you, when you play a game, you play to win, right? Anybody out there? Okay, there's a few of us. Not very many, at least. They're not the excited ones, at least. But when you play, you play to win. Um, Here's the deal. What, what does it look like to win at life? What, what does that mean? And, and that's what we are kind of looking at talking about because here's what I know is that winning is better than not winning, right? Winning is better than not winning. And I know, in, at least in, in my situation, when I go to, to play some, I'm going to play to win, and I'm sure that's many of you. I heard a story when, when talking about this and was thinking about this, and um, so we heard, heard a story about a dad and a daughter, and the daughter was, was getting the dad to play a game with her young daughter, um, elementary school age or so, early elementary, and she's talking to her dad and saying, Dad, we're going to play this game. The dad had never played this game before, and so she's explaining the rules to him. This is what, what it's going to look like. This is how we play. This is what you do. Da, 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 da. And then, so the dad, not completely understanding, says to the daughter, um, okay, so how do I win? And the daughter just looks at him and says, dad, you're not going to win. I am. <laughs> and that is, I love that because She's saying, you're not going to, and, and if you're a parent, you, you understand this. How many times do we let our kids win? You know what I mean? When you're playing a game. Um, I've been accused of being so competitive that I didn't let my kids win when they were kids. Not true. Not true at all. I would let them win. My, I hear, I think, my son back there, he has an objection to that. It just made you better, son. He's, he's scarred, I think. Um, no, but listen, sometimes we, we let our kids win, um, win when we're playing, especially when they're very little, uh, obviously, to avoid any crying or whatever. But the, the, the point with it is that, that the, the goal is to try to win. When you play something, the goal is to try to win, right? In life, what's the goal? What, what's the win? And I asked this question last week when we were talking uh, what's the win? Sometimes you just you have to be able to define the win. In the areas that matter most, what's the win? In in marriage, what's the win? What is what does it look like? What in in my marriage, what's going to be a win? Is it just we're going to stay married? 
hopefully that's not the win for you, and that just we're just going to hang on by our fingernails and, and not get divorced. Um, it, it, what's the win in parenting? What does it look like? What, what, what's the goal? What's the win? What's the win at my job? What's the win at my school? What's the win in, in, in my career long term? What's the win with my finances? How, how do I win in, in these areas, what does that look like? Here's the deal. If, if you're going to know what the win is, you've got to define it, right? You, you've got to define what the win is. And, and, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. It's about living life on purpose. God wants you to live a life with purpose. And defining the win, defining what it means to win in the different areas, the different aspects of our life, helps us to understand that, hey, if, if this is the direction I'm going, I want to I live on purpose. I want to live my life on purpose. Now, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and go a little bit further into the passage that we looked at last week. The Apostle Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to read it again, except I'm going to read it from a different translation. Today I'm going to read from the, the NLT, the New Living Translation, and it says this starting in verse 24. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? And here's what Paul says. So do what? Run for second place. Run to get the participation award. <laughs> no, he says, run to win, right? That's the goal. That's what you should be doing. That's, that's the hope. You want to run to win. And he's challenging all the people and all those that are listening to him would understand the, the illustration that he's using, this athletic illustration. Listen, run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. You have to be. If you're going to get the goal, if you're going to get the prize, there's got to be some discipline, right? You've got you to discipline yourself in order to prepare for the race. They do it to get a prize that's going to fade away. They get it to get just an earthly prize, right? But we do it as Christ followers, we do it to get an eternal prize. So here's what I do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what Paul's saying. This is, this is the point. So I'm going to run with purpose in every step. I love this. I'm going to run with purpose. I'm going to run and lead my life. I'm going to, I'm going to walk this journey that God's called me to. I'm going to, I'm going to do it with a purpose. Why? Because I'm going to define what the win is in every season, in every circumstance, in every situation in my life. I'm going to have a goal. I'm going to have a purpose. I'm going to have a direction that I'm going. I'm going to run my race with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I'm not just doing it, you know, to, to put on or, or to act like I'm doing something good. No. I discipline my body like an athlete. Training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after I've preached, I myself might be disqualified. I don't want that to happen. So what am I going to do? I'm going to run with purpose. I'm going to live my life with purpose. I'm not, just, I'm not just leading a life of que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, let's see what to do. No, no, no. I'm, I'm living on purpose. I'm leading a life of purpose because God made me, created me, created you for a purpose. And if that's the case, then I want to lead. I want to live on purpose. Amen? Are you out there? So that's the goal, right? It, we have to be able to define what it is in its, each situation. I'm going to run my race with purpose. I'm going I'm to live my life on purpose. What, is, what does that look like, Jason? Well, listen, maybe, um, you know, in, in, in marriage, in, in, in your relationship with your spouse, you, you talk about what that looks like. You, you, you take some time and you say, what, what, is, what does a win look, for us, look like for us as we continue to grow in our relationship? I, I, we're going we're gonna to do these things. We're going to have these things. We're going to make sure we communicate. We're going to talk about things. For, for, for Jen and I, we, we 
we said from, from day one, we're, we're going we're gonna to be open, honest with each other. And, and even in the hard conversations, we're going we're gonna to be willing to have those and talk through anything that comes up. We, we just said from, from day one, we're going we're gonna to spend time together. I heard uh, one uh, minister say that, that their, their win, how, how they kind of define the win, is it, it kind of cheesy, but it was, we always want to enjoy being where the other person is. Uh, cute, sweet, I appreciate that. It, it, if, if you like getting along, if you enjoy one another, that's, that's probably a good, a good thing in marriage, right? A few of you think that. So, so what's the win? If you don't define it, if you don't, if you don't have some, if you don't know what that looks like, then it's, then, you know, how are you going to run in, in that direction? In, 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 with parenting, how, how are you going to know that you're, you're moving in the right direction? Because really you ought to be teaching in a direction, right? We, we, we ought to be teaching our kids in a particular direction. The, the goal of parenting isn't just, hey, we survived. They survived. I survived. It's good. You know, that, that, that shouldn't be necessarily the goal. We, we, we ought to be going in a direction, desiring to get somewhere with our parenting. For, for us, it was we, we want our kids to love Jesus more than anything else and fulfill the call of God on their life. It, it, it was the goal. It was, it was our, our heart's desire for those principles, those things to be seen in our kids as they get older and as they're you know, out of the house and going and doing their own thing. Are they still going to love Jesus? And are they going to live to, to fulfill the purpose that God has for their life? Are they going to live life on purpose? You see, if, if you're not parenting in a direction, then, then you don't know what the goal is. You see what I'm saying? We have to, to live on purpose. It's like running a race. It's like if, if when, the thing about running a race, just like in the Olympics, is you've got people lined up beside you that you're, you're running in the same direction. The fact is, let me, let me illustrate this. Uh, Victor, Julian, uh, Michael, Rogue, come up here real quick, real quick. Okay? So in, in a race, let's, let's line up this way. We're racing that way. Okay? In a race that I'm going to win... We're, we're, watch it now, no cheating. <laughs> so if we're running to that wall over there, okay, right? We're all set and ready to go this direction. No false starts, you're disqualified, <laughs> right? So we're running in this direction. You guys ready? One, no, just kidding. We're not going to race. <laughs> but the point is, if we're running, okay, and we're all going in this, we ha I have some people running alongside me that help me know that I'm going in the right direction, right? If I was running this way and wanted to win over there, I would know pretty quick that I'm going the wrong way, right? Yeah. It would be pretty obvious. We would never see in the Olympics somebody line up, you know, to go the wrong direction. You'd never see it. Why? But partly because <laughs> they know which direction to go because it's, it's clearly laid out. Right? So we're all running this. I've got people alongside me, fellow competitors that are running in, in the same direction that I'm running in. Right? All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah. But, but here's the deal. Think about this. In life, it's not always so clear, is it? In life, it's not always laid out in the same way where you know exactly the direction that you need to go and exactly what to do and exactly how to do it. You don't always know that. And you especially don't know if you're not taking some time to define the win. You, you've got to determine, you've got to, you've got to say, listen, God, what is it that, that you want me to do? You've placed me in this job situation, God. What's the win in this, in this job for me? Is it just to make money? Or is there more? Is, is there a higher calling? Is, is there something more for me? It, do, do I need to live out the things of God in front of the people that I work alongside? 
Probably. You see, when you define the wind, doesn't it change the things for us? Doesn't it change the behavior? Doesn't it change how we look at? When we, when we see, God, you've placed me here for a purpose. God, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher in, 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 in the school district. God, you've put me here for a reason. God, it's not the, it's not the uh, best job in the world, but God, it's an important one. And God, you've put me here for a reason. Maybe that's, that's the mentality. Maybe, God, I, I'm really seeking to get this job, but you've got me here for now. God, what's the win for me in this season? Whatever it is and whatever, whatever season you're in, we have many facets, many relationships, many things that go on in our life. We have to define the win. Now, I love how the Apostle Paul, before he gets into this athletic metaphor that he's talking about here, he defines the win for himself in the, fir- in the previous four verses. And I want to look at these one at a time. He defines what the win is in, in, in verses 19 through 22. Let's look at it. He says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many people as possible. So he's saying here, listen, I have made myself a slave to everyone. In other words, not, not a, 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 a exactly a slave, but I've, I've, I've made myself conform in ways so that I can win people to Christ. What's the win? So that I can win people. You see, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be around this group of people, so, so I'm, gonna, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily uh, conform to their morals or their standards or those kind of things, but I'm going to do some things so that I can, I can be around them and, and I can uh, interact with them and I can have some uh, influence with them. Why? So that I can win as many as possible. It goes on. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. Wait a second. Paul, what do you mean you became like a Jew? You are a Jew. <laughs> what you? Yeah, but here's the deal. I became a better Jew. I became the very best Jewish person that you could become. So that, why? So that I could, I could minister to them. To, to those under the law, I became like one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law the law, so as to win those under the law. I became like those people. That's where they were. That that position, that situation, they were that way. So I became like that, though I'm not under the law. I know I'm not under, because I have a higher calling. I have a, a north star. I know where I'm going, but I became this way so that I could minister to them. I had a purpose. I had a purpose. Verse 21, to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. I became like a Gentile. I, I, I was able to walk and talk like, like a Gentile, like those not knowing the things of God. Though, he says, I am free. I'm not free from God's law. I'm under it. But I, I'm under Christ's law. I'm going to come back to that. God's law versus Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law. In other words, listen, I became like those who didn't know Jesus in, in at least so that I could have influence so that I could win them to Christ for a purpose. And what is he saying here? It, God's law, that's the, the Sinai law or the, the, the commandments, but he said, I'm under Christ's law. What was, what was Christ's law? As I have loved you, love one another, right? That's what he was, that's what he was telling him, them. That's, that was Christ's law. It was, it was beyond. It was more than just the Ten Commandments. He said, if, as I've loved you, you go love one another. So he was taking it to a, a different level. Jesus was. And Paul is saying here, listen, I'm, I'm under Christ. So, so because of that, I have a purpose. And that's to love people into a relationship with God. He goes on. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I love the focus. 
I love the determination, the desire. What's the win? The win is I'm going to do whatever it takes to see people come to know Jesus. In this position I'm in, in, in whatever it is I'm doing, I'm, I'm working in this area, I've, I've started my own business, or I'm working for a boss, whatever it is, I'm going to do whatever it takes to show Christ to people. Why? Because that's a win. It's, it's the win for me. In, in this area of life, in this, in this place that God's placed me, it's a win. In my relationship with my spouse, What's the win? We're, we're going to love Jesus, and we're going to love Jesus together, and I'm going to love her like the bride of Christ, uh, and, and I'm going I'm to show Jesus in, in every area that I can. I'm going I'm to do the very best I can for my spouse, and I'm going to be sacrificial. I'm going to love them above myself. W what's the win? You, you have to define the win so that you can live on purpose, Right? Because then it gives, it, it defines it, it gives you direction. And you're able to say, I can live with purpose in every step. In everything that I do with my family or, or with my neighbors, I can live with purpose in every step. Here's what I know, is you don't win by wishing. Right? You don't win by wishing. You don't win by hoping. You don't even win by praying alone. You win when you Prepare to win. Saying no to you so that you can win. You see what I'm saying? There, there, there's there's got to be purpose behind it. But you'll never say no to you with the urgency that you need to in order to win if you don't first identify the win. You have to identify the win. So, what's the win? What's the win? It's, it's the question that we keep asking ourselves, and we're going to ask it through this series. Why? Because we need to wrestle with this. In the areas of my, my life, what's the win? What's the goal? How do I make this a win? It might not be something I enjoy right now. It might not be one of the funnest seasons of life right now. But how can I make it a win? How do I live through this time with purpose? And here's a question that you have to ask yourself. Another question, are you preparing to win? Are you preparing in, in whatever it is, whatever uh, avenue that, that, that God has you in, whatever, whatever place, whatever circumstance, are you preparing to win? Are, are you being purposeful about what it is that you're choosing to do with your life in this moment? Because here's what I know. You only get one season. You only get this time, right? Right? You only have these moments. You only have so long of having your kids at, when, while they're little. You only have so long of, of them being teenagers. You only have so long until they're out of the house, right? You only, you only have this season once. This season, it, it, it only comes around once. Well, how am I going to make the most of this time? Am I preparing to win in this season? with my kids, with my spouse, with my finances. God, am, am, I, am I being obedient? Am I honoring you? Am I, am I doing what I should with my finances? What, what's the win for, for me it, with my finances? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be obedient to God. I'm going to give the tithe back to God because that's, that's a biblical principle. And so I'm going to win because I'm choosing to do that. And I believe God's going to bless me because of that because it's a biblical principle. Right? There's other principles in God's word. When I speak God's word over my life, I just believe it's going to work. It's going to take shape. It's going to begin to produce something in my life. When I sow seeds that are, that are healthy, that are good, that are right, what's going to produce out of that? It's going to be good things, right? You speak God's word, you speak healthy, good things then that's what's going to be the product. I heard, heard somebody say, well, I don't know why my kids yell at me all the time. Hey, you guys, hey, get over there. I don't know why they yell at me. Well, it's what you're sowing, right? When, when, when you sow yelling and screaming, that's what they're going to emulate. That's, that's what is going to be the byproduct, 
right? Because that's what you're doing. There's, there's principles in God's word that just work. When you, when you do, when you put this into work for you, it will work. And here's the point, because you only got this season. You only have this time. And God, I don't want to miss out on it. God, I want to I be ready for what you're doing. I want to be ready for what you want to do. Here's what I know. When you win, the people closest to you win also. The people that matter most to you and, and, are, and are around you a lot, when you win, they win. Why? Because you, you, you elevate those around you. When you define the win and you say, listen, I'm choosing to win in, the, in this area, this arena, the, the, this avenue of my life, I'm choosing this, then, then you win and those around you win. And that's an awesome thing. Now, if you're not a Christ follower, then, then these principles, these things that I, I've, I've talked about, man, they will work for you. You don't have to be a Christ follower to make, make these principles work, although it's found in Scripture. And so you can take these things and you can put them to work for you, and they, they will be good. They, they will work. But let me, let me tell you, if, if you are a Christ follower, if you do say, I believe in Christ and I have a desire to follow him, then we're living for more. We're living for more than just, hey, I just, I, you know, I, I just want this to work good enough. There, there, there's more. And here's the challenge. Here's the challenge. And I want, us to, I want us to see this. I want us to grab a hold of this. And, and we're going to close with this today. Here's the challenge. That if, there, if there's a win, I need to know what that is. I need to define it so I can live life on purpose. So for Christ followers today, here's what I want you to grab hold of. Grab onto these, hold onto these, jot these down, whatever you need to do, take a picture of the screen. Here's the challenge for each of us. Number one, we're not gonna run aimlessly. We're not gonna run just with no direction, no purpose in life. We're gonna run with a purpose, right? We're running with purpose in every step. And as a Christ follower, the purpose that, that pervades all other purposes is that people should see Jesus in me. As I'm running the race of life, am I running to just get ahead? Am I running to just push everybody else out of the way? Am I running for my own glory? Or am I running for something greater? Am I running for something bigger, something that allows me to have a prize that lasts forever? How does, how does the areas of my life look like where that's concerned? Am I running aimlessly or am I running life on purpose? Here's the second thing. We don't fight like a boxer just beating the air. We don't do things for show. We don't, we don't just do things without any purpose in mind. We don't do things for people to just see us and make ourselves look good. No, we do things on purpose, right? We live life on purpose. We're not about just wasting our time and energy. We're doing things on purpose. Think about it. How much time do we spend on things that in the scope of eternity matter very little? How much time do we waste on things that don't really matter in eternity? I don't know. That's a question you have to answer. If you're doing it on purpose, great. There's times I 
need to veg out. You know what I'm saying? But watching a whole bunch of TV is just not something that I do. Not because I couldn't do it. I could easily do it. But I don't because there's no purpose. There's not good purpose in it. Now there's times, there's times on purpose that I need just some downtime. We all do. Why? Because we need rest. Rest for our bodies so that we can continue to run the race, right? But just like any good athlete, we have to recover. We need recovery time. But the, the question becomes, how much is an appropriate level and how much is too much, right? Is there a purpose behind it? Is there purpose behind it? Y you live with purpose. Here's the next thing. You make your body your slave. See, you're not, you're not living life for what feels good. Any athlete will tell you it's not always going to feel good to get better. It's not always going to feel good to get stronger. It's not always going to feel good to put the work in. We're not living for the accolades. We're not living for the feel good. We're not living so that, you know, everything can just, you know, be what I want it to be all the time. No, we, we make our body our slave. In other words, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm choosing to tell my body what it's going to do. This is what you're going to do. Today, Sunday, you're going to go to church. Thank you, Donna. Appreciate that. Right? I mean, we on Monday, we don't have a problem saying, hey, it's <laughs> got to go to work today. We get up on Sunday, sometimes, it's, you know, it's not always this is what I do. This is what I do. But as Christ followers, as Christ followers, we're, we're not living for ourselves. We're living on purpose. Right? We're living on purpose. Because otherwise, there's no win. Otherwise, we're, we're, we, don't, we don't define the win in our life. See, we choose, we choose. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna get around people that, that sharpen me. I'm gonna get around people that help me, that encourage me, that elevate me, that take me to a new level. I'm choosing to step into something that's uncovered. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into a, a community group where I can be sharpened, where I can have people around me that maybe they know a little bit more than I'm all, you know, not always comfortable sharing, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share some of those things. Why? Because... I want people that can come around me and pray and help me to grow and to become what I need to become and that I can rely on and that I can, I can link my faith with theirs because life is just tough. Life is hard. It's going to beat us down. It's going gonna, it's gonna to cause us to stumble at times. And if I don't have people around me that I can trust that can help me, that can lift me up, that can sharpen me. And sharpen sometimes, it hurts a little bit because it, it grinds on the things in my life that maybe have gotten too comfortable, but it makes me better, it makes me sharper. It causes me to be able to do what I need to do that much better. And why do I need to do that? Why? Because I'm living life on purpose, amen? And so I'm, I'm choosing to do the things that aren't always easy, just like an athlete in training, I'm disciplining myself. I'm choosing what's more important, what's most important over what I really like or what I feel because it's what's best. Choosing to do what I need to do. Just like Paul said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be this way so that I can win some. I'm going to be this way so I can win others. What am I going to do? I'm going to choose what's important and I'm going to choose the important over what feels good or what I like. I'm choosing to make my body, my slave. Why? Lastly, so that I won't be disqualified. So I don't miss out. Because here's what I know. When we consistently and constantly choose what I want best, what I like best, and what's good for me, and me, 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 then we miss out on what's best because God calls, Christ called us to be living sacrifices. In other words, we put aside the flesh. We put aside what I want, me, 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 me all the time. We put that aside and we deny ourselves. Why? To put others first. My, my, my wife is going, is, it, 
I'm gonna put her above myself, her needs above my own. Wives, my, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna honor my husband, I'm gonna respect, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him the honor he deserves and I'm gonna put his needs above my own. When two people do that, that's a strong marriage. That's a healthy marriage. But you have to define that. You have to choose. You have to say, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Today, I'm going to choose this. You know what? Yesterday, I didn't win. Yesterday, I didn't get it right. Yesterday, I messed up. God, forgive me. But today, today, I'm going to get it right. Today, I'm going to I'm choose. I'm defining the win. Today, I'm going to do better. Today, I'm going to run the race on purpose. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because I don't want to be disqualified. I don't want to keep going down this, this path of living life on my own terms, living for myself. I'm choosing, I'm choosing to do this. I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. Listen, God calls us to live life on purpose. He designed you for a purpose. And listen, when you start living this way and living with purpose, man, it gives you an energy. It gives you, it gives you just, just, this, this desire on the inside to continue to be better, to strive for more, to accomplish more for the kingdom of God. And listen, it helps real quickly to define, listen, that's not that important. This is way more important. It just helps you. And I challenge you, I challenge you to begin to live this way. This is different than the world lives. It's different. The world would say, listen, do what pleases, do what you like, do what makes you feel good. Listen, it's, it's contrast to that. But listen, I'm telling you, you wanna live a life that brings satisfaction and peace and joy and all the things that God word, God's word talks about? Listen, you live life on purpose. You live it in a direction. You run the race with purpose in every step, amen? Amen, let's pray. Father, I thank you. Before we wrap up tonight, we want to give you an opportunity to respond to the message. If you've never accepted Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, and tonight you want to make that decision, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I want to live the rest of my life for you. In your name we pray. Amen. The Bible says that if you just made that decision, that your name is written forever and eternity. And we believe it's the greatest decision that you could have ever made. If you have questions about what it looks like to follow Jesus, message us right here on YouTube or send us an email at vccinfo1 at gmail.com and we'll put some information in your hand to help you kickstart your relationship with Jesus. We love you guys so much. We hope that you guys have an incredible week and we'll see you back here next Sunday for Church Online.